If you're looking to practice SAT triangle questions, that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. So let's do that. All right, if you did not watch the video that led up to this video, make sure to watch that first if you don't know your triangle rules, but we're basically just gonna be practicing SAT triangle-based questions. So let's get right into it. Here, they tell us we have similar triangles and and it tells us that sine of n is five over 13, which makes sense, right? Opposite over hypotenuse. So yeah, of course it is. Uh, what's the value of sine of r? Well, if they're similar, they share the same angles. And no matter what the actual lengths of this triangle are, if it's bigger or smaller, it's still going to simplify down to the same exact fraction. So five over 13 is our answer. Go ahead and try this one out on your own first if you'd like. Sorry, you can't see choice D. Uh, there it is in case you're curious, but let's do it. Very similar to last time, we have more similar triangles as asking about Sokotoa. So if it says A corresponds to D, basically this is our angle A, this is our angle D, which means C and F are gonna correspond with each other. What is the value of sine of D? Kind of weird that they have uh, <laughs> the X right here, but whatever. The sine of D is gonna be the same thing as the sine of A. So the sine of A would be three over the hypotenuse. And this is not a Pythagorean triple. So we would basically have two squared plus three squared equals this hypotenuse squared. But yeah, opposite over hypotenuse, it should be three over our hypotenuse. Uh, two squared is four, three squared is nine, nine and four is 13. So three over the square root of 13. Of course, they don't want us to have a square root in the bottom, so we'd multiply by the square root of 13 over the square root of 13 to get 3, 13 over 13. Where is that? Choice C. All right, this is kind of a cool conceptual question where we're trying to figure out what would make the two triangles similar. So they're already telling us that they're right-angled, so they share at least one angle, right? And DE is gonna to correspond to PQ. So the most helpful thing would be to just straight up tell us another angle, which I'm not seeing here. As far as the length of one line being twice the length of another, that's not necessarily going to prove that they're similar. If they were similar, we would have some sort of a proportional relationship, but choice A and D are gonna be out. If they tell us just one angle, that's not gonna work. So it has to be choice C by de uh, default. But let's go ahead and think about why this is correct. If the sine of QRP is equal to the sine of EFD, they already told us that DE corresponds to PQ. So everything is lined up there. And like we went over in that other problem, all of our Sokotoa stuff is going to be the same if we have similar triangles. So that's you know straight up proving that this that these are indeed uh, similar triangles. All right, go ahead and try this one on your own first, but here we go. So, all right, we've got an isosceles triangle and it's telling us our degrees here, you know, 120, um, which means by default, both of these guys are gonna have to be 30. And immediately, before I even know the question is, I'm like, well, let's cut this thing in half because now we have 90 degrees, 120 divided by two is 60, and we've got 30, so we have a 30, 60, 90. It tells us that the distance from C to AB is three. So it's telling us the distance of that line that I just drew. That means CB is gonna be six, cause that's two X and uh, AB, the distance between A and B is going to be three root three plus <laughs> three root three. So six root three. So choice C here. And again, if this stuff is not making sense, you do need to watch my first video where I explain these rules. In this video, I'm really just going through and using them to solve actual SAT questions. All right, go ahead and try this one out on your own first if you'd like. But basically, we have two sides and we need to know the, um, the third side, which happens to be the hypotenuse. I'm not recognizing this as an obvious Pythagorean triple that I have memorized, so I'm just gonna use the Pythagorean theorem real quick. And I'll grab Desmos to do that because why not? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So in this case, it would be 12 squared plus 35 squared is going to equal this. 
Uh, and then that number, whatever the square root of that is, is our answer. What was that? 1369. I guess we could also do a uh, square root and then throw these guys under it since we know that that's going to happen. And yes, yeah, 37. So our answer is 37. Here's another one pretty similar. I'm not going to show you the other answer choices because you shouldn't need answer choices. This is pretty straightforward. We're trying to solve for a third side when we already have two sides. So in this case, uh, our hypotenuse is known. So it would be 6 squared plus b squared. Uh, I'll just call it x squared so that Desmos gives me the answer. Equals 10 squared or 100, right? And this is going to give us our answer right here, 8 you could also recognize this as a three, four, five triangle. This is a six, eight. Oh my God, why is that so thick? A six, eight, 10 triangle. Uh, I told you they show up a lot. All right, this is kind of a fun challenge because it includes a square. So we're going to need to know at least a little bit about squares to do this. But let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Um, basically, they're telling us six. They're telling us this is isosceles, and then we're supposed to figure out the area of the square. So I need to know one of the side lengths in order to get the area of the square. Uh, the cool thing is, if this is isosceles, the cool thing that I want to do here, at least I think it's pretty cool, is to just draw this all the way across. This diagonal is going to be uh, 12, right? And now we have a 45, 45, 90, because obviously this is 90 degrees. So I can figure out uh, the length of NO, LO, just using special right triangle rules. So 45, 45, 90 is going to be X, X, and then X root 2. So basically, X root 2 is 12. So X times the square root of 2 equals 12. And I can solve for that. Or So I know that each of my sides is going to be just, you know, X equals 12 over root 2. Um, obviously, we would want to turn, stick the, the root in the numerator if this were the answer we were going for, but we're supposed to figure out the area, which is just this squared. Uh, so this squared, well, 12 over root 2 squared. We square the numerator and the denominator. 12 squared is 144. Square root of 2 squared is just 2. 144 divided by 2 is 72. So our answer is 72. This is a fun one because uh, it's a triangle question, but where's the triangles? I see a square and a circle. Uh, try it out, but pretty much we know that a square is 90 degrees all around, and it's asking us about the radius of the circle, which is going to be kind of like this, right? So that isn't something I can play with by itself, but if I drew it all the way across, now all of a sudden I've created a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Uh, the side of the square is 8 centimeters. So that means that my diagonal there is going to be 8 times the square root of 2, and half of that would be my radius, 4 times the square root of 2. So my answer is uh, 4 root 2. Go ahead and try this one out on your own first, but here we go. So they're asking us the area of the triangle in square feet. And then they're also giving us a conversion, which we should probably know. But the info that they have is in inches. I'm just going to draw this out real quick to make sure I'm not completely lost. And it says, uh, in, a, in a right triangle, <laughs> well, I've already screwed up. In a right triangle, this will make things easier. Because remember, if we have a right triangle, then we have base and height as our legs. Uh, one side measures 48 inches, so 48 inches, and the other measures 30 inches. And it says which is the height from the base, but I don't care. We can just pretend we flipped it on its side, right? doesn't matter. It's arbitrary. Um, but we want to convert that into feet. Uh, so there's a couple things we could do. We could either calculate this and then divide by 12 squared, because remember, because we're talking about square feet, not just feet, or we could convert this to feet and then just calculate it. I think I'm going to go the first route. I'm going to get my, um, my area, and then I'm going to divide by 12 squared. So I'll grab it Desmos, because why not? 
and we have, you know, BH divided by two is our formula. So we would have 30 times 48 divided by two. And then that would be our area in inches. But then that needs to get divided by 12 squared, which will give us five, which is our answer. All right, just visually, we can tell we're dealing with similar triangles, right? We've got a triangle within a triangle. And it looks like they're giving us some information that we already have visually. So let's just jump to the main question. It says the area of PQR is 720. So that's the big one. So PQR, PQR is uh, 120. And sorry, 720. I don't know where that one came from. And we also know that the area is going to be uh, BH divided by 2. So let's figure out QR because that would be our height, right? So basically 720 is going to be equal to 60 times QR over 2. Uh, so it'll be, and just to show you the power of Desmos here, we could just plug in X for our QR. So 720 is equal to 60X over 2. And that's actually going to just give us our answer. So 24. So now we know that QR is 24, the whole thing, that is. And then it's asking us the area of SQT, which is the smaller triangle. So now we just need to use a proportional relationship. So we can tell that the smaller triangle is three times smaller than the big triangle. So we already know that our base would be 20. And then uh, 24 divided by 3 is going to be 8. So it'd be 20 times 8, because QT is going to be 8, divided by 2. That's the same thing as 10 times 8, which is just 80. So our answer should just be 80. All right, I'll show you the answer choices in a second, but try this one on your own first. If you watched my other video, you should be able to get this in about mm, one second. Yep, it's 103, because the exterior angle theorem tells us that this angle is going to be equal to these two angles. 40 plus 63 is 103. We can use the exterior angle theorem for this one as well. So first of all, we need to know that this is a vertical angle. So this right here is also going to be 85. And then remember, the external angle theorem says any outside angle like this is going to be congruent to the two inside angles uh, that are opposite it in a triangle. So uh, 85 plus 35 is going to be 120. Here's another conceptual one. Uh, see if you can figure it out. Pause the video, try it on your own first. But they're telling us basically that we have these uh, triangles and that angle A is gonna match D, angle C is gonna match F. So we know that they're similar already, right? We also know that AC is parallel to side DF. What additional information is needed to prove that they are congruent? So exactly the same. Basically, we need two matching sides to be equal because otherwise they're just going to be proportional. So AB being equal to EF would not work because AB is the beginning of the triangle and then EF is the end. Likewise, BC is the end of this triangle and DE is uh, the beginning of this triangle, just kind of like looking where things match up. D says side AC is equal to DF. Those guys actually match up. So that would be our answer. All right, let's end things with one more conceptual question. Take a look here, see if you can figure this out. There is a simple rule to this, again, mentioned in the video that I have linked in this video where I go over the rules, which is any two sides combined of a triangle are going to be larger than the third side. Uh, and I guess, likewise, any side of a triangle is going to be uh, less than, shorter than the two other sides combined. So what we can do is we can look at our answer choices and we know that six plus eight is 14. So AC is gonna have to be less than 14. So 15 is out and 14 is also out, but now we have 12 and two. So what gives? We can't have two right answers. Well, we have to start thinking about the other sides, right? If AC was only two, then two plus six would be eight, and then this third side would not be following the rules. So it's gonna have to be 12 for that reason. After working through all those triangle questions, you've probably noticed that the SAT isn't just testing your ability to memorize formulas. It's testing how quickly 
you can spot relationships and recognize patterns, which is a perfect lead into this video sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an interactive way to learn math, science, and logic that makes concepts click. Instead of sitting back while someone lectures at you, you're actively solving problems one step at a time. There's no endless cramming of notes or memorizing pages of equations. You just dive in, you follow your curiosity, and you let the lessons pull you along. The more you experiment with the ideas, the more they stick. I'm working through their visual algebra course right now, and I've gotta say it completely reframes the way that you think about algebra. You know the kind of math that makes up 70% of the SAT math section? You can start learning for free at brilliant.org slash penguin test prep or click the link in the description. And if you enjoy the platform, that link also gets you 20% off a premium annual subscription, which includes unlimited daily access to everything Brilliant has to offer.